Hi, in this video I'm going to run through a sequence that shows you how to look at some solar shading and the effect that that has both on daylight factor inside in the room and also the effect it has on air temperature through solar gains. So we're going to start off with a basic room and we're going to look at the daylight factor on the working plane and then we'll make a comparison of that after we've modeled some shading onto it. So I've got my basic shape here and to look at daylight factor I need to come down to my radiance package. I'm going to go through this reasonably quickly because I do have a, a separate video which you can find just on daylight factor. So I'm going to go to illuminance, uh, working plane, and I'm going to just double check a couple of settings here. And it should all be okay. So I'm just going to go and si simulate. Click on the room and click on simulate. Now, depending on the level of quality, I'm setting this to medium. Depending on the level of quality, this could take anything from a few seconds up to, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, so I've set it to medium, which should kind of speed things up a little bit. I'm not really looking for quality in this particular video. What I'm looking for is just a comparison between what's happening in the room without solar shading and what happens to the room when we do put solar shading on. Okay, so here we have a, a map of the room. And as you can see, it's quite blotchy because of the quality being set to medium. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my units to daylight factor. And I'm going to have a look at some thresholds. I'll set that to daylight factor of 2 and apply. And what we have here is we have a map showing us the areas that have a daylight factor of less than 2. So it's 49%, pretty much half the room. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an image from that so that I can compare uh, to it uh, later on. So let me just take a quick um, snap of that. Okay, and I'll just save that um, onto my desktop for the moment. So capture one. Okay, now we'll close that down. And what we'll do now is we'll also run um, an energy analysis on it to have a look through Apache and see what's happening in there with the air temperatures. Now, I haven't gone looking at any of the profiles. I haven't made those windows openable. I haven't looked at the construction database, nothing like that. All I'm doing is I'm um, running a simulation. Uh, so we've got the full 12 months here. Uh, output options, click on the room, go OK and simulate. Now, I'm expecting with this that the temperatures will go quite high because the room is an enclosed space. I haven't modeled any ventilation uh, or air exchanges into this. It doesn't really matter what the values are, I just want to see what they are and then I want to see what the impact of putting shading on w would be. Okay, so if I click on the room and look at my air temperatures and go to my synopsis, I'm finding I've got minimum of 19, maximum of 23. Now, that's telling me that there's a, a likelihood that the heating and ventilation and air conditioning system is keeping it between those two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of that for a second. I'm going to go into my building template manager and I'm going to turn off uh, cooling and I'm going to turn off heating. So I just want to see what's happening in this room without any intervention from the system. So I'll save that and go OK. And I'll rerun the Apache simulation. Using those new room conditions. Now again, this is going to take just a few seconds to run through. Because the model is quite basic, it's going to happen very fast. OK, so air temperature, synopsis. And now we can see that we've got a maximum temperature of 26 degrees. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a uh, an image of that. And I shall save that 
and I'll call it Capture 2. Again, just on my desktop, so we can refer back to it later. Okay, so that's the starting point for this model. What we need to do next is have a look and see what happens when we put some uh, shading on there. So to model the shading, we need to go back to the Model It application. And I'm going to go into my plan view. And over here, what I'm going to do is draw a prism. Now, this is where you have to be a little bit careful, okay? The reference, I'm going to call the reference uh, canopy. The object type needs to be set to local shade. Now, the building that I've drawn, or the room that I've drawn, is three meters tall. So, usually, the placing of the canopy will be just below the roof level, or really just above the top of the windows. So, I'm going to put my plane in at we'll say 2.7 meters and see how it looks. The height of the shade, I'm going to change it to 0 0.1, so it will be 100 millimeters in thickness. And then you just draw it on like you would draw any prism. And I'm going to make mine, we'll say, one meter wide and see how it looks. I've got my grid settings to one meter, so that's why it's snapping to that. And I'm going to close that down. Now, if I go back and look at my model viewer, you can see that the shading has been placed at a height of 2.7, I think it was, and the height of the plane of the um, shading itself is 100 millimeters in thickness. So that has modeled the shading. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to close down the model viewer. I'm going to go into Suncast. Uh, this is important. So I need to go into Suncast and I need to run my solar shading calculations. Now, pretty much all of these can be uh, taken as default, so I'm just going to go Start. Now, it will show some information on the bottom of the screen here, but I'm not really overly interested in that. What I want to do is go back into Apache now. And run the simulation again. And here's the important bit. Make sure Suncast link is ticked. So that's going to take the numbers and the simulation that was run as part of the Suncast application 30 seconds ago and apply that into the Apache Sim. So we'll go simulate again. And what I'm going to look for here is I'm going to look for my air temperatures to see uh, have they been affected by the, um, the presence of the canopy. So air temperature synopsis. So look at my air temperature maximum now. It's been brought down to 23 degrees. If I just uh, show you the uh, capture, the screen capture that I had from uh, earlier, that maximum air temperature in there was 26. Okay, so we've gone from tw just over 26 degrees um, down to just over 23. The only thing that's been changed is we've put a canopy on there. So effectively that's shading. It's stopping the sun from warming the room up too much. Okay, so that's proved that the shading will reduce the air temperature in the room. Second thing we want to look at is the effect that that has on daylight factor inside of the room. So to do that, we need to come into the radiance package. And we want to look at illuminance working plane. And again, I'm just going to go straight to the simulate button. The settings on this are still the same as they were at the start of this video. Um, so it should generate the image reasonably fast. And I'm going to do the same thing again here. I'm going to show you the results from right now and compare them to the results from uh, seven or eight minutes ago. And what we should see is that the room has been darkened effectively because of the canopy. Okay, so what we have here now is our map. And we will look and change our units to Daylight Factor. And we'll look for a Daylight Factor of 2 and apply. Okay. So what we're seeing now is that 67, almost 68% of the floor area has a Daylight Factor of less than 2. If I go back and show you the screen grab from earlier, we can see that 
49% of the floor had a daylight factor of less than 2. So by putting that canopy on there, we've done two things. We've reduced the air temperature in the room because it's stopping solar gain or reducing solar gain. But we've also had the effect of making the room slightly darker. More of the room has a daylight factor of less than 2. It was 49% of the, f of the floor area uh, was less than 2 at the start of this simulation. It's now gone up to almost 68% because we've put the canopy on there. So we've got positives and negatives. The canopy will help to reduce solar gain, which will have the effect of cooling your room. Um, but it has the negative effect of making your room darker. Okay, so both maybe are obvious conclusions that you would draw before even running the IES package. But this is just a walkthrough on how you can prove those points using the software.